From the start of 2023 until now has been a crazy reading journey. I've found new favorite books that I know I will love forever. I've started some great series, some not so great series. There's been books that I liked, books I've recommended. But now I think it's time to finish off some books that I want to complete before the 2023 year ends. So let's check off some books together. And that's what this book miss video is today. I hope you guys enjoy. I wanted to finish out some series before the year ends, but I'm just like not in the mood for it. I'm kind of in like a little bit of a slump, like no book is really calling my name. I don't know any other books that I want to finish before the year ends, but I went to Barnes yesterday and I saw Lynn Painter's new book came out and I completely forgot she was coming out with a new release this year. And it's another YA romance. She is the queen of YA rom-commy books. And this is called Betting on You. The cover, this is beautiful. So aesthetically cute. I think I want to read this one next because this is definitely a book I would like to finish off before the year ends. It's one of like the newer releases that came out. But yeah, I was looking at like the other books that I had on my list that I wanted to finish out before the year ends and I just don't want to slump myself out forcing myself to read a book I don't want to so I'm kind of in this mood I'm kind of in a rom com -y kind of fast-paced cutesy book mood and I think I'm gonna read this next so I'm gonna start this in a little and we shall see how it goes I'm excited to to read this kind of book I'm just really in the mood for it so I'm gonna take the dust jacket off and we shall start this in a little after I eat lunch look how cute it is it's pink and like I would call this indigo. That's what I would call this. Let's go eat some lunch. Let's start this book and I will come back with some thoughts and some feelings. And I'm so excited to be in a little cutesy rom com mood. Oh my god, I was typing in Betting on You on Spotify to listen to a playlist and they have it on audiobook on Spotify. So I might do that when I can't read to get through the book because it's Friday and I'm busy this weekend. So I feel like I can get some done listening to it. Ah. Not sponsored, but Spotify audiobooks seriously has changed my life. There are so many good books on here. Listen, highly recommend getting Spotify premium. It's changed my life. I've been listening to, this is not any part of this video, but I've been listening to Daisy Hates, the second one, The Great Undoing, just to hear Julian's voice. And it is so good. I only listen to his chapters, but like these audiobooks are incredible. Anyway, I'm trying to find a playlist. I don't know if I want to use the one that she created. I think I'm gonna because she's the author, so... guys i wanted to give an update before i go and kind of read i feel like the rest of this book i've been eating it up all day long i started it last night and i read about 100 pages until this morning and then this morning i had some stuff to do so all day long i was like running errands and i was getting ready for tonight and i was just listening to the audiobook because like i said it's on spotify and i've been eating it up i feel like when i'm listening to an audiobook especially like a romance one i can kind of picture it better or any audiobook i can kind of picture it better than when i'm reading it i don't know if it's because there's different voice actors or the way they're like sounding out what's happening better than in my head that I do I can kind of picture it like a movie in my head and it's giving like all the little rom commy vibes but even when I'm reading it it's pretty good and I'm on page 176 right now I think there's about 400 pages of this but it goes like really really fast I feel like that's all in Painter books they're just really fast paced and just like no brain power reading but what I love about her YA books is they really feel like your like one first love like your high school little romance that you experience and I really really am enjoying it in this one I feel like it hasn't been too much of the romance yet they basically met I think it was three years ago on a plane ride it was like a 10 hour plane ride to a different state and they both kind of connected because Bailey's parents just got divorced and Charlie's parents were divorced but they kind of got off on the wrong foot because Charlie was kind of being I don't know the word he was being and Bailey's kind of like a goody two-shoes so he was kind of like not making fun of her but kind of picking at her not picking at her riling her up I don't know he was just being like 
he was just doing that. And then they saw each other again two years later at a movie theater or something. So they kept bumping into each other and now it's present day and they're both started at the same job. So you kind of have them as workplace, not friends, honestly, just workplace co-workers going on. And then they kind of strike up this deal at work to bet on something. So that's kind of where the story is going right now. It hasn't gone too romantically just yet. There's like a little hints of stuff going on, but they both kind of connect on the same things with like their parents and their exes and stuff like that. So they have things in common. But what I love so much about her writing is one, again, it's fast paced and it's just like light. I think this is what I needed right now. Just like a cutesy romance, just like no brain power. I'm just reading. I'm really just vibing. I'm, I'm giggling. Like it's just cute. And I really am enjoying the audiobook, especially since I was busy today. It's just been so easy just listening to it. And I'm just like, I don't know. I've flown through it. Like I woke up and I read up to page 100 and then I listened to about 80 pages and it's been so good so far. So I think I want to read a bunch later tonight and kind of finish this off tomorrow. I'm excited to see where this goes because I do like the both of the characters. They're very different in their personalities and like how they are. But you kind of see how like Charlie has kind of a soft spot for Bailey. So I'm going to finish this. I don't know when, but I will update you guys when I get further or if I finish and I'm very excited to do that. So, okay. Say okay, bye. So I finished betting on you yesterday, last night, and I kind of flew through this, but honestly, I was loving the audiobook. I listened to majority of the story, and I think I read the ending of it, or like the last maybe hundred-ish pages, but the audiobook was so good because it was dual point of view, so you get both male and female voices for Charlie and Bailey, and I just, I don't know, I really enjoyed it, and I thought it just gave more, I don't know, character to the story, because usually when I'm reading, I feel like I don't give too much of like what it's supposed to sound like and i feel like when you listen to an audio of what they're saying and stuff it kind of gives more personality i guess i don't know it's easier for me to picture things like i was saying in an audiobook but i think that their relationship was really cute and not just like them in a romantic setting i think that the way that they met into a friendship i really enjoyed like their chemistry in that way and the way that they kind of connected and could see each other and it felt more of like a realistic ya novel than other ones i've read i feel like it can get really cheesy really unrealistic and just kind of like fun rom-com vibes from a lot of ya books especially romance ones but this one actually felt a little bit more on like the realistic side of how it is as a boy and a girl this age going through this stuff that they're going through because there's also some family stuff going on between the characters that you saw especially Bailey and I feel like I really enjoyed that and I feel like it felt a little realistic especially the relationship too I feel like usually also in any romance book the third act breakup really bothers me but I feel like I'm less harsh on it in YA romances because I feel like you know they're 16 17 years old this miscommunication kind of like makes sense for them like it's fine there's a lot of Taylor Swift references of course Lynn Painter loves to do those and I think it's just so fun to pick out the little easter eggs in her writing I love the two characters I loved Charlie I love their relationship it is a little bit longer I think it's like four or something pages but I really enjoyed it I think the scenes were cute what they had to do with each other were cute him helping her and them like seeing each other but then the way they met I really enjoyed it I gave it 4.25 stars and yeah it was really really sweet really cute something it's what I really needed at the time of when I finished never I needed a book like this especially finishing throne of glass like I'm just still I stayed there this really Really, it was a good choice. I'm happy that I read this again before the year ends. So after that book, I was like, okay, I don't know what other books I should finish before the year ends. And then I went through the series that I have to finish. And there's a few that I don't know when I'll ever get to, but there's some that I'm kind of closer to finishing. And the ones I was between is Supernova, which is the last book in the Renegades trilogy, A Dream So Wicked, which is the new 
newest release in the Entangled with Faye series and also Legendary, which is the second book in the Carvel series. So I was between those three. I literally could not pick a book for the life of me. So I threw a little poll in our Discord and I said, guys, help, please help me. I can't pick a book. Nothing sounds good to me. I need to finish some books before the year ends. And I was kind of more between Supernova and Legendary. The one that won that little poll and also the one I think I was more interested in reading was Legendary by Stephanie Garber. So if you don't know, this is the Carvel trilogy. It's a trilogy that comes before Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. So if you've read that one, this one's kind of like the story before that with different characters, but it's in the same world. You kind of learn more about the magic and one of the main characters in Once Upon a Broken Heart. So I read Once Upon a Broken Heart first and I started this last night and I'm already, hold on, because I was listening to it on my audiobook. I told you guys I was listening to Betting on You and I don't know why I've been loving audiobooks, but Spotify didn't have, or Spotify has Legendary on Spotify, but it's locked. You have to pay for it. So I got it on Audible because I had a couple of credits and I've been listening to it too. And I got to page, hold on. Okay, I know I'm over a hundred pages. That's all I know. I'm going to figure that out and I'll update you guys later on today but I started this before bed last night and I read like 40 pages and then this morning I woke up and I was like I really just I love being in this world I don't know it's really hitting for me right now and if you don't know what Carvel is about the first book is basically about this guy named Legend and he hosts these kind of like Carvel magic games and you have to be invited to go and once you go they tell you that don't believe everything you're seeing like magic stuff but the game that happens in Carvel the first book is Scarlet one of the twin sisters in here has to find her sister Donatella and she's kind of like the prize you know you have to find Donatella and you win Carvel. So her sister Scarlet is just on this whole race to find Donatella in the first book. But I gave that one three stars because I didn't love Scarlet's point of view. I didn't love her as a character. I did love the setting and the Carvel and the magic. It was just so imaginative. Like this one I'm loving because it follows a different character's point of view and I'm loving that so far and I'm loving where the story is going and what they have to do. And you meet Jax who is my favorite character of Once Upon a Broken Heart and that is honestly the only reason I wanted to get into this book and finish the trilogy because Jax is just... And as soon as you get into this I think I I was like maybe well I read only 40 pages last night and I already they already talked about Jax basically they didn't say his name but like I know who he is because of Once Upon a Broken Heart and stuff and I'm really excited about that so I'm excited to see where this one goes I feel like I'm gonna love this one a lot more than Carvel I'm already like eating it up and very invested into it and there's also another character in here I don't know if I'm supposed to like him but I'm really enjoying him right now and I feel like this is gonna be a really good read I'm really happy that I started this one I just love the settings and the vibes I'm also happy that I read Once Upon a Broken Heart first I don't know why I just feel like I'm happy that I did like I'm happy that I read that whole story and I kind of know what happens in that and I know I don't know and usually I would be mad because this kind of like, because if you read Once Upon a Broken Heart first, it gives a few things away that happens in the Carvel trilogy, but didn't mind that this time. Usually I don't love spoilers, but I'm kind of happy. I have kind of like a knowledge of what's happening in this. It's making it a little bit easier to read. I'm just like really enjoying the world and the magic. It's just so good. I'm going to go read this. I will give some updates when I get further in. I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to read it. I'm really excited. I will come back a little bit later. the same day it's just later on i have not stopped reading i mean i did for a little bit to film and edit a little bit but i just can't stop reading this i love this one so much better than the first one the first one kind of just gives you a glimpse into caraval the actual like game and everything like that not like too much into like the magic of what this world is and i guess it's also because Jax is in here but like not really i feel like he's not like one of the main main characters he does play a huge part into what you learn in this one and what the main character's point of view that you have in this what they're following and what they're trying to get at the end of this so i'm really enjoying this one because you already know about Carvel so them playing in Carvel right now you kind of know the behind the scenes of what's gonna happen but the first one kind of just focused on Carvel and everything around that and Legend who hosts it and all of that so going into this I love the storyline a lot more because it kind of follows the magic system and the fates and the playing cards that are kind of I think mentioned and stuff in the first one but it's like really a heavier plot point in this one and I don't remember if I said this about the first book I feel like I did because I remember saying this but I don't remember if it was about this book I feel like sometimes when she's writing a scene stuff will happen a character will say something there'll be a bunch of dialogue and then she kind of rehashes it in a few paragraphs so like say the main character is talking with another character and they kind of give her info then the main character will think okay she said this so that means this and this and this and I feel like she kind of just describes it a little too much and she kind of does a little bit more of like a telling not showing it's a lot of 
kind of explaining what just happened and it's kind of like I was just there with you me and the main person we're in this together at this point I know what's happened and I know what just happened so like the rehashing of it I feel like gives a little bit too much detail but other than that I'm loving it I'm loving what's going on I feel like I'm really immersed in the world I think it's really fun and I have so many questions and I can't wait to see what happens like is this gonna end on a cliffhanger I hope not I hope we get at least some answers because there's a lot the main character is trying to figure out I just got to another part this is night four of carnival and it's page 301 so I want to finish this today I feel like I'm not gonna stop reading I just am loving it like a lot and there's about 439 pages so I have about 140 pages left to go or around that also the audiobook has been really really good i went to run a few errands cook lunch and i just put my audiobook on i just have been loving audiobooks recently so so far so good i'm gonna go keep reading i'm really intrigued to see what happens now and i'll probably come back when i finish <music> finished legendary this morning i wanted to finish it last night but i ended up having like 100 pages to read this morning so i woke up early and i binged the rest of it and i think i'm gonna give this one a 3.75 i could round it up to four stars but there are some things that i didn't love like i didn't like the way this ended i feel like it was a little anticlimactic or i don't know i think i was just expecting a lot more from like the reveal and everything the ending i, I think i spoiled part of it for myself because i looked up what someone looks like on pinterest not really realizing and kind of gave it away a little early on in the book but other than that i expected Jax to be like more of a prevalent character and he is with the storyline but not with the main character if that makes sense like like what he was doing in this book was pretty prevalent for like the story and what was happening and what the main character in carnival was going through but i feel like for like the romance that i thought that he was gonna be in it wasn't what i expected like i loved another main character his name is dante like i loved him so much like he was my favorite out of this whole book and he was more I don't know he gave he gave but i did like that we were introduced to Jax. i do like that i finally figured out like the whole fate's magic system of the playing cards and stuff because in once upon a broken heart you don't really get that you don't get like the backstory of his magic and where he came from and i liked seeing his backstory in this i feel like the first one definitely was more magical with the carnival like place and like being at the carnival carnival like i don't want to call it a carnival it's not really but like with that magic i really think the first one really gave more of that this one more follows like the magic and the fates and stuff and i really enjoyed that as well but yeah i just didn't love the ending as much as I wanted to but I did enjoy this storyline more than the first one that's why I think I would give it not a three I gave the first one a three so I'd give it a 3.75 maybe a four I don't know but right now I'm kind of in between that and I really enjoyed it I liked having this character's point of view throughout the whole thing and I think I just yeah expected more from the ending but there's a third book so I'm sure all of my questions will be answered in the third one eventually when I get to it hoping to finish it before the year ends but thank you guys for coming along this week with me reading some books to finish up before the year ends. feel good that I've gotten some books out of the way and I have a bunch now to get to before December ends we're gonna really get through these books now so thank you guys so much for coming along with me reading these books with me I hope you enjoyed let me know if you read any of these your opinions on them if there's any other books that I should finish before the year ends let me know that's all for me thank you guys for watching again I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow for our next day in Bookmas. Bye!